I don't think we, I don't think we necessarily, and no pun intended, started there. We didn't, I don't think we started there. So I think we've made progress in in the conversation. That's just well, that's how nice. I look at I like it. I, mean, I like that idea. So then in that case, um, there's a possible world in which only abstract necessary things exist and no concrete, um, nothing concrete exists. Uh, yeah. Okay. Sure. I mean, okay. I, I'm playing the game a bit. Uh, an Aristotelian well, I'm just a wondering. Bit. Is this a, I mean, I'm it, just, it, yeah. On, on an Aristotelian view where there's no beginning to time, every possible world overlaps with the actual world. So, I mean, unless the actual world at no point contains any concrete things, then um, there isn't a possible world where at no point is there a concrete thing. Like if there's some concrete thing at some point in the actual world, then it's not possible. This is an entirely empty world, no concrete things in it. But- Ah, so, so, so that, well, so that, yeah. So then that's my point is then that means that something concrete is necessary. Um, huh. I mean, it, it follows that if there's something concrete, then it's necessary that there's something concrete. That's true. It doesn't follow, it doesn't, I don't have to hold that there is, but um, yeah, I think that's right. On in the Aristotelian view, that's right. That there's, there couldn't be an empty world unless the actual world is an empty world. Uh, Right. But then if that's the case, then now you have something necessary that's concrete. And now we go all the way back to step one in which your, your theory is now radically different. No, no, no. You have something clear, concrete I don't, necessary. I don't have that there's a necessary concrete thing, but I think it's necessary that there's something concrete, but that each of those things could be contingent. It's just that there couldn't be no con uh, concrete things. Right. But it doesn't mean there is one concrete thing that's necessary. It just not. Means that not individual, but the but the, thing exists. yeah, but the genus. I'm saying. So when like we're talking first thing or something, what do you mean by the genus? What do you mean the, the type? Yeah, the category of concrete. Oh, so the, the, so, so so the category concrete. of something yeah. being concrete that's necessary. Yeah. And so that, I'm not saying that therefore you're forced into oh a particular molecule or a, a pen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. Right. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that, but. The, the the category of concrete existence would then be necessary. Yeah, okay. Well, that's compatible with me saying every concrete thing contingently exists. Yeah. Right. But now, to me, it seems like you're getting a bit closer to uh, the view that we're trying to represent. Uh, maybe a little bit, but I'm not sure that... And it's, it's significantly closer because um, this, so let me see if I re, can retrace the steps where we just got, got to so yeah, maybe sure. because maybe I'm missing this but um, what I I was advancing that view that there's a beginning sequence of contingent propositions let's say contingent concretely existing things or something um, and you said well that view suffers from this problem that it can't explain why there's something rather than nothing. Um, and then you said, well, on our view, there's, ne there's a necessary concrete thing. Um, then I said, well, problem with that is it doesn't explain anything if it's a necessarily existing concrete thing. And now you're saying, well, on the Aristotelian view, it's necessary that some concrete thing exists brackets if it's actually true that some concrete thing exists, whatever. Um, what's the significance of that concession? How does that, I'm not sure how it deals with them because my rebuttal to your point was you're not explaining anything if you've got a necessarily existent concrete thing because necessarily necessary truths don't have explanations. Yeah, and, and I'm, I'm not sure that you're disagreeing with me about that or not. Yeah, because I originally, I originally was, well, I shouldn't say originally, but the step in the discussion I wanted to go back to is when I was talking about 
uh, a possible world in which abstract objects it exist, but no concrete object exists. Originally, you said yes, but then you thought, given your Aristotelian view of what you were, yeah, if um, I'm going to play the representing, game. Yeah, yeah. If you're representing, if you're sticking to that, then you're saying no, no, that's not really going to work. So then, if the abstract, change, but before yeah. we get to that bit, just whilst yeah. we were still on the point that when I, because you said on our view necessarily existing concrete thing exists, and I said I don't understand how that provides any explanation. I'm I before we start mm -hmm. talking about whether I think there could be no concrete things. I'm just not clear whether whether you agreed with that reply or whether you disagreed with it. Uh, agreed with what? That necessary... Necessary truths don't have explanations. Do you agree with that? Um, yeah, in, in a sense that I don't really like the self-explanation idea. Uh -huh. so. so if there's an entity, X, that's concrete and exists... Mm. And that that's a necessary truth. Yeah. Nothing explains that X exists because it's a necessary truth. Right? No, there's nothing. Just out, yeah, there's nothing. There's nothing outside of the thing itself. No, that's explaining. Okay. No. So yeah. originally the criticism was I can't explain why something rather than nothing exists. And your and I said, well, what happens on your theory? And you said, well, on our theory. God exists necessarily, but now yeah. I think I've just got to concede that nothing explains that. So how can well, it? Because be now I'm showing that you're winding that. up in the same place. But before we now... talk about that, how it still feels like you haven't. Are you agreeing then that your theory doesn't have an explanatory advantage because it doesn't explain away why it doesn't have anything to say about why there's something rather than nothing? Positing a being that exists necessarily with no explanation can't explain why something exists rather than nothing, can it? Um, well, when you say, why is there something rather than nothing, right? Mm -hmm. And we're including uh, concrete existence in that. I'm saying that if God is a necessary being and he exists in all possible worlds, yeah, that ex in the sense explains the question of why there couldn't be non-existence but nothing explains why he exists. So it's only to take one step back <laughs> in the weird. chain of explanation and, and then you find that you're... A, because if I say, look, it's just a brute contingency that something exists, then you might rightly complain that, well, take one further step back. Why does that brute contingency exist? I say, well, no reason at all. And you say, aha, there's no reason then. It's no good to just give me one step of explanation away from the kind of precipice of there being no explanation beyond that. But it seems to me exactly what you've done by just giving me, you know, just some object exists necessarily, but nothing explains that. I mean, if anything is, is an unsatisfying explanation, it must be that. <laughs> Mind if I jump in here? Because this is, this is great. I mean, I've been listening. This is, this is awesome. But so I think at, at this point, so I, I think the, the, the most important point here is that, well, it seems like this is going to boil down to the fact that on both views, I'm not saying you're necessarily committed to this, Alex. I'm just saying, as far as the discussion is concerned, both views are going to commit to something necessary. But right now, there's the, the there's so there's the question of the overall theory. And wait, how is there a difference? You're saying that there's something necessary, has no explanation. I'm saying there's something necessary, it has no explanation. But I'm not really sure that's the case. So first of all, there's there is the question of whether self-explanation makes any sense, and that's that's controversial. So we can either okay. accept that there, there is self-explanation or say that something doesn't need an explanation. Now, if we go for the latter, something doesn't need an explanation, we can either say it doesn't need an explanation by uh, uh, virtue of it being necessary, period, and that can like literally be the tree right outside my door. It just doesn't need an explanation. Just That's just it. Or we can say that there is something about the nature of this thing that doesn't call for an explanation in a similar way, although the analogy isn't perfect, to like an analytic truth like A equals A. You're not going to ask for an explanation for that. Now, it's mm. obviously difficult to think of something like that in, in in the concrete world, right? Because because it's not an analytic truth. But then, at least what we're saying is that th th these are two views, and we're thinking of the explanatory power it, on one view. So, 
So on one view, there's there's just a rock that's self-explanatory. On the other view, we're saying, no, 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 it, it's something that self-explanatory or something that doesn't require explanation. But in order for it to be that, it, it's not that nature. It's not, it's not a rock. It's something that is in a different category than these things around us that, you know, the natural world that does call for an explanation. So I, it might be a bit tricky, like in the sense that, well, well you look at a theory from the outside. Okay, well, it explains it. That one explains it. Fine. We're good. We're, we're, it's a stalemate. But then, I mean, in a sense, you could say that about like a solipsist versus an external world realist. Well, I mean, he explains everything. I mean, yeah. But look, here's, I mean, if, if what you're saying is on our theistic theory, the difference is we've got a thing, God, whose nature gives it the I mean, just to, to be quick about it, the get out of jail free card. I don't mean anything offensive about it. It's, it's not any accusation of deception or anything like that. But like the reason why this is different from the other things is its nature. If I press further on that, isn't it really just that its nature is that it exists necessarily? I mean, and, and then now what we're talking about is just actually, it's just not a contingent proposition. I mean, I'm okay with necessary propositions not having explanations. So like, that's fine. It's just that if if all you mean by its nature being special is that it's a necessarily existing thing, then I just don't see how that progresses the dialectic anywhere. Because if what we're saying is the reason why there's something rather than nothing is because something exists necessarily, then you can't be a, an advantage in terms of explanation because aren't we just agreeing that necessary things don't have explanation? So positing another necessary thing can't help you in terms of explanation. Just yeah, well, I, I, I guess we are hold agreeing. On to a that. second, hold on a second, Abdurrahman. Yeah. Yeah. I think if we're agreeing on that, we've made progress, as far as I'm concerned, in the conversation. <laughs> because I don't think we, I don't think we necessarily, and no pun intended, started there. We didn't, I don't think we started there. So I think we've made progress in in the conversation. That's just well, that's how nice. I look at I like it. That. I like that idea.